All right, here we are for the second example for chemical sequential analysis or sequential chemical analysis, whatever, however, which way you want to say it. This time we're going to be looking at the anions trying to precipitate out specific anions. To do this, we're going to have to use cations, whereas in the first example, we were trying to precipitate out cations using our anions from the list. Step one, make your list. Well, first we have to look at, we have chloride ions, acetate ions, and sulfate ions. We have to make our list of ions that they are going to create a precipitate reaction with. Chloride ions will make precipitate reactions with silver, lead 2, tellurium, mercury, uh, mercury 2, mercury 1, and copper 1. Acetate, small list, just silver. And sulfate makes a precipitate reaction with Silver, lead to calcium, barium, strontium, and radium. Now, we've also identified in pink the common ions that are found between at least two out of three of these. The silver ion creates a precipitate with all three, and the lead ion, the lead two specifically, makes a uh, precipitate reaction with chlorine and the sulfate ions. So we don't want to use those in the first round of trying to identify an appropriate um, cation to create a precipitate reaction with. So we look to the other four in each of those two lists and we are looking at tellurium, mercury 2, mercury and copper 1. In the other example we have calcium, barium and strontium and radium. There's no overlap in between those two sets of four. So now we want to look at safe, common, low reactivity or lower reactivity. Tellurium, I've never worked with. Mercury 1 and Mercury 2, toxic. Let's rule them out. So we're going to use copper 1. Fairly common. Uh, we need to couple this with a nitrate in order to create our precipitation reactions. Conversely, we're going to use sulfate. And for the sulfate, we're going to use the calcium. We have barium, strontium, and radium. Possible, but calcium is higher in the um, periodic table within the same column. They're all alkaline earth metals. Calcium is the highest. Thus, it's going to have the lowest amount of reactivity. All right. Doesn't matter which one we do. Try to precipitate out first the calcium, sorry, the chloride or the sulfate ion. Absolutely not. So there's multi solutions to this problem. Step one, we're going to add, I chosen to use copper nitrate. And of course, we're going to ask the question, is there a precipitate? That's what the PPT question mark represents. So the answers to that are either yes or no. Down below our result, if we have a precipitate form after adding copper one nitrite to the solution, then the chloride ions are present. If we do not get a precipitate, there are no chloride ions present. If we do get a precipitate, of course, we should filter before going on to step two. In step two, we've chosen to use calcium nitrate. We use the nitrates because they have high solubility and they're not going to create a false positive for us. The question is, will a precipitate form? Answer, yes, then sulfate ions are present. If the answer to whether or not there's going to be a precipitate is no, then sulfate ions are not present. Once again, filter, and then we go to number three, this one has to be done third because the silver ions are present throughout all three of the anions that we're investigating. So will it precipitate? The answers are yes or no. If yes, then the acetate ion is present. If no, then the acetate ion is not present and we should filter. At this point, I'd like you to do investigation 7.5.1, question A only. Take a read of 341 to 342. Briefly describe how color can be used as qualitative analysis. And answer questions 1 to 4 on 342. And to finish it up, let's try section questions on page 346, 3 and 5. And that should cover class. Thanks. Work hard. Keep trying.